Danke. Is that a jet ski? Wait a second. Is that Mark Bone? In pants? Mark? Brady! How's it going? What are you doing here? I'm good, man. How are you doing? Oh, thanks. Here. Talking to that. A little mustache. Speaking of which, where'd you get the coffee? I don't know. It's YouTube. I guess that's a pretty good point. So Mark, riddle me this. You're an accomplished filmmaker, you've directed award-winning feature films, dozens of short docs, commercials, and you have a filmmaking academy of over 3,000 filmmakers. I feel like there's a little bit about storytelling that I could learn from you. And I'm in the narrative field, so I wanna know the difference between narrative and documentary filmmaking. Well, the principle of story doesn't change between those two genres of filmmaking, but the main thing is that documentary really is about capturing real people. It's not about using actors or, or over controlling a situation. It's about finding real stories with real people and capturing their journeys. Okay, so there's similarities and differences. There is, there's absolutely. I think if you can learn the basic principles of storytelling, it will help your commercials, your documentaries, and narrative in your case. Okay, so what would you say if there's one mistake that people make with storytelling? What do you think that would be? I think that this is a huge house. And before I answer that, we should find a new location. I think we can do that. Make yourself at home. So, number one tip, hit me. Yeah, I think one of the biggest mistakes people make is they obsess over cinematography, all the technical aspects, and they have this belief that if they can get the right lighting, the right shot, the right camera, the right lens, the right LUT, if all these perfect things come together, then somehow the film and the story will all come together as well. And that couldn't be further from the truth. I think people, it's good to obsess over good images. You want your film to be enjoyable to look at, but if there is no central desire, what I mean by that, if you don't have someone who wants something, then your film is empty. Those beautiful images are just that. They're beautiful images. And people will turn off that film pretty soon because mm -hmm. there's no uncertainty. When someone desires something, it means they want something they don't have. And that can be a physical goal. That can be, hey, I want to finish this race. I've never done a triathlon. Or... It can be a metaphysical goal. It can be, hey, I want to find out who my family was. I'm adopted. And so that's another type of journey. Mm -hmm. And so until you have a person who wants something, your film is empty. It's just beautiful images. And like I said, that's just like a demo reel. Okay. And, it, and unfortunately, because of the format we have right now with Instagram and TikTok and all of that, where it's about showing something really cool really quick. So visually driven. Like... Very visually driven. People begin to believe that that's where their actual long form films need to go, which is being visually stimulating the whole time. I'm guilty of it. I think many of us are guilty of this, Brady. Oh, yeah, and I course. still fall into that trap where I'll get onto set and I'll just begin obsessing over what looks the coolest. Mm -hmm. And I need to stop and think, no, have I dug deep into what this person wants? And am I yeah. showing the journey towards that desire? There's more to this house, isn't there? So we know that storytelling is important, but say you've got a topic that's really daunting, like, a, I don't know, climate change. How do you structure that? Ooh. Nice, you got the white ball in the hole. I think that's what you're supposed to do. Um, well, let's talk about that. So yeah, topic versus story. You mentioned a topic there, climate change. But that's not actually a story. So if you're gonna take on something like climate change, you need to find one person who is trying to accomplish something related to climate change and you will actually begin to tell the larger story of that. But we need to be able to follow one person. I've, I've heard this said before that a million people dying is a stat but one person dying is a tragedy. And that's actually the story, is following that one person. But how do you structure a story then? You found that person. This is where people 
begin to understand, okay, I need a character who mm -hmm. wants something and they have a goal that I'm gonna follow them towards. That's what intimidates me is like structure is like, is there one just structure or that, like, that everybody follows or are there different or just the whole structure thing is so daunting. Yeah, I think it's always good to learn the principles or some people call them rules, but I think rules are meant to be broken. So once you understand these basic foundational ideas, you can go then make it your own. But if I had to give you kind of the pillars of storytelling, especially in a documentary scenario, what I would say is first is you got to find what the person wants. Establish that right up. Within the first 10% of your film, we need to know who the main character is and what they desire. What is their goal? Then, after that, you get to go into a bit of their backstory. Find out why they want that. And I would say that's a big mistake is people often start with backstory rather than starting with goals and desires mm -hmm. at the front. Once we know their backstory and what they want, then you need to start exploring the actual journey and this is where there needs to be obstacles and challenges. Because without showing them navigating these challenges, it's then gonna be a pretty boring film because it's all just gonna work out and we won't actually, mm -hmm. we'll be, we, we lose interest. We think, well, nothing, everything's gonna work out for this person so I don't know if I need to watch the rest of the film. Yeah, you kinda want them to be shocked. Like, you know, a curveball be thrown. Exactly, and so sometimes people will tell me in our course, they'll be like, hey, well, like, there's actually no challenges for my person. And I would say two things. One, you haven't explored deep enough. Sometimes the challenges are not obvious. It, you know, if someone's trying to accomplish that triathlon, maybe they're really athletic, so there isn't a challenge of training. But maybe there's more of an emotional challenge. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's something else going on in their life that's actually making this accomplishment more difficult or or that it's giving them more of an existential struggle, something that's more happening internally. So you gotta explore that. But if you've done that and you still can't find any struggles or obstacles to show in your film, you might have the wrong story. We love rooting for the underdog. We love being surprised in films. And yet documentaries unfold in different ways and sometimes you have a film where that's not so obvious. So you have to explore deeper. So, desires, then you have background, your backstory, that's kind of the why. Then you have the obstacles, the journey, where we're going with the film. And then once you've gone through those three stages, you can then look, explore the resolution, the mm -hmm. climax, the final parts of your film. So four pillars, and that's all I need to know. Then I'll be as good as you. That's a, <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, truly, I, I, I never felt like I was a good storyteller, but I, knew how to break down complex things into simple tasks. I like to-do lists. And so for me, when I would get into my edits, I would just start building to-do lists. Like, have I established what the person wants? Have I shown their backstory? Have I shown two or three obstacles along the way? Do we know the ending? And once I started going through the checklist, then I could actually build the cool parts around the story. Well, Brady, there's many more people that I'm sensing need help with story. So I'm gonna go jump on my horse. Go ahead. Please. My seahorse. Seahorse. <laughs> By all means, let me walk you out. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm.